Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining us for this important press conference. Uh, many of you thought that you were coming here specifically because this is about the July 3rd Independence Festival fueled by Thornton's. Actually, we're here celebrating National Donut Day. And if you notice, Thornton's own kitchen donuts off to the right. So uh, having said that, we're really here to announce the July 3rd Independence Festival that is celebrated by or fueled by Thornton's. I wanted to just say this morning, before I introduce the mayor, that last year when this event took place, uh, we wondered how the community would react. <clears throat> and as a reminder, we had 35,000 people react to this event. <clears throat> and when Teddy Abrams uh, took the baton and stood up to lead the Louisville Orchestra, as I said in the press release, it literally, when they struck up the national anthem, sent chills down my spine, and as I stood up on the stage and watched the audience, it was complete quiet, and the audience was mesmerized by that event. And uh, took my breath away, and still is one of the, my fondest memories of working down here at the waterfront was to see the community come together for this event. Having said that, we're back again this year. It's my pleasure to introduce one of our serious partners in this event, uh, our mayor, friend of mine for a long time, and, uh, Big Waterfront Board Member, Mayor Greg Fisher. Thank you, David. Thank you, David, and good morning to everybody. Uh, well, you all might recall historically, you know, we've our presentations and celebrations on July 4th have been a big part of the community, and it's no secret that uh, when there were budget cuts from the state to uh, the local Waterfront Development Corporation's budget, it really strained. Uh, the resources to be able to put on a big July 4th festival. So we had to step back from that a little bit. And what we ended up coming back with, in my mind, was a tremendous display of our city's talent, uh, where we rallied around, of course, the Louisville Orchestra, uh, Teddy Abrams, and put this challenge out, that let's make this event something authentically Louisville, that when you think of different major 4th of July events around the country, whether it's in uh, Boston or other places, and you think about signature events, that's what we wanted to design here in Louisville. And of course, then we put that in the capable hands, more than capable hands of Teddy Abrams and said, what's the local content that we can bring into this? Because when we knew that we would be introducing a lot of people to the orchestra for the first time, and what we've seen with uh, Teddy and Andrew and the whole orchestra, Louisville Orchestra team is now Louisville Orchestra is your orchestra. It's out in the community anywhere, anytime. It's not surprising to see them show up. So we wanted to take advantage of this festival then to introduce the, the orchestra to even a broader uh, array of Louisvillians and people visiting from throughout the world. And boy, was it successful. Uh, David Karam is exactly right. That evening was one uh, for the ages not just for the orchestra to celebrate its essence, which of course has been uh, world-class musicianship for decades and decades, but then to see Ja'Cory Arthur come up and do his thing, Jason Claiborne and his amazing vocals, Ben Soleil and his ability to captivate an audience with his cello and his vocals as well, with the Louisville Orchestra as a backdrop. So we achieved our objectives for that first year in terms of captivating the city and the country with a major orchestra uh, celebrating our company's, our country's uh, history here. So knowing Teddy Abrams, uh, he likes the challenge. And so he will be taking, I'm sure, this year's performance to another level that we can't even imagine, but that's inside of his head over there. And it is going to be something that will be quite the dis display coming up this July as well. So the city of Louisville is just really pleased to be a partner in this event. Uh, it would not happen without the numerous uh, philanthropic donors here in the community that understand the importance of bringing a community together. In particular, I'd like to salute uh, Matt Thornton, uh, CEO of, of Thornton's, who also happens to be the chair of the Waterfront Development Corporation. But it was uh, Matt's dream and his hope that this 4th of July celebration would be something that would unify uh, the city in an unprecedented way. And Matt, you and your team just did a heck of a job. Where are you, Matt? 
heck of a job on this. He's characteristically low key, uh, but you and Thornton deserve a huge amount of credit for making this happen for our whole community. So thank you very, very much. Good job. Okay. So uh, we now have with us a, uh, a young man celebrating his birthday that has a few words for us to say. So please welcome Metro Council President David Yates. David. Happy birthday. Well, now I found out my birthday competes with National Donut Day, so I don't know. Um, just to build off of what the mayor just said, a really special thanks to Matt Thornton and Thorntons for their leadership. Events like this aren't possible without strong corporate sponsorship. And by them taking the lead with their lead, the generosity, their leadership, now we have, I think, more than 30 sponsors that have come together to make this a success. In order to do major events like this, you have to have a strong public partnership um, with a strong partnership with the public and private. And, and this has gone above and beyond what our expectations. Uh, Teddy, I think that the bar was set last year um, and people in the community had been calling our Metro Council offices. Uh, a lot of them was their very first experience with the orchestra, with these kind of events. And it really is an event that affects all of Metro Louisville. So we can come together for a fun and vibrant celebration. It benefits the entire city. Each one of my colleagues have members that come down here and expand their minds, expand their expectations, and have a really good time. We got an event where families can come together, a free event, enjoy fireworks, concerts, and just overall the the warmth and love of this great city. And so with that, I'm so appreciative to all the people up here, the leadership, uh, Mr. Karam, um, our orchestra, and all the, all the people that made this possible. Thank you. I also want to mention that uh, David is also a member of the board of the Waterfront Development Corporation. And we have another board member in the back, uh, Rip Hatfield, Rip, if you'd wave, that's another board member. So we've got a nice showing of our board out here this morning. Um, as everybody has said, the, this is a possible event because Matt Thornton has made it possible. And um, Matt has been an unbelievable chair of the Waterfront Development Corporation has been supportive of all of our events uh, that we do down here and is, participates in so many of them. And we're just, we're so proud of our relationship with the Thorntons and with Matt. And with that, I really would like to ask you all to welcome the chairman of the board of the Waterfront Development Corporation and the maker of the feast, as they said in the Charles Dickens show, I guess the feast being the donuts. Thank you, David. On behalf of all of our team, um, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to partner with such a great event. You know, Thornton's um, is from Louisville. This is our hometown, so it means a lot to be able to bring our customers, um, our team, all out for just what is going to be an absolutely remarkable holiday weekend. Um, last year, you're right, the bar was high. Uh, I got a little bit of a peek under the tent from Teddy, and I think uh, you might as well here in just a moment, but it's just going to be an absolutely unbelievable event, and we're thrilled to be a part of it, so thank you. Uh, to make this event happen, it requires a partnership with the orchestra and with Waterfront Development Corporation. For the last, um, I guess now, nearly two years, we've had a wonderful relationship with a young man whose name is Andrew Kipe, who's the CEO of the Louisville Orchestra. And Ashley Smith, who does the events with the Waterfront, and I spend a great deal of time with Andrew. And he's just absolutely a wonderful partner to work with. We're crazy about the relationship that we've developed. And as we continue to get to know him better and better, it just gets the relationship gets stronger and better. And eventually, I'll get him to stop wearing a tie. Andrew, come on. Thank you, David. And um, the, the relationship with Waterfront and, and the orchestra is a special one that we've built over these two years. And the, the event really could not be done by either of us individually. So it, it, uh, it's something very special. It, as we've mentioned the, this morning already, it really does take a village to make this happen. And the entire community uh, not only comes together to enjoy the event, but to actually uh, produce it. We, we've, uh, we've mentioned Matt and Thornton's leadership uh, and sponsorship, but there is a, a long list of folks that we need to, to recognize. And I have the um, the, the duty to do that this morning, the, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, uh, first, of course, uh, Metro Louisville and uh, Mayor Greg Fisher and, and President Yates have stepped up to help um, uh, make this event possible in numerous ways, including um, 
uh, all the hardworking uh, members of LMPD, EMS, Public Works, and all the other agencies that have to jump in to make an event with 35 to 50,000 people possible on the waterfront uh, each, each year. Um, we've already mentioned uh, Waterfront Development and David and, and Ashley and their staff. The Louisville Orchestra, of course, uh, and, and my staff gets great recognition as well for, for their work to make this happen. Uh, we have partners with the Courier Journal, and uh, we're appreciative to Michael Young. Fifth Third Bank has uh, is stepped on this year to help uh, fund our family fund zone. Uh, Christy Motes and Luann Atlas are here this morning. Uh, the Galt House Inn and Suites, or Hotel and Suites, and uh, Lisa Holler uh, have been very supportive. Louisville City FC, Amanda Duffy and their players helped support uh, the event uh, through the fireworks display. Uh, WHAS 11 and Sean Kalen are our media sponsors. Uh, the Bats and Scott Shoemaker have also helped to, to partner. Louisville Downtown Partnership, uh, Rebecca Matheny. Uh, the Greater Louisville Convention and Visitors Bureau, Karen Williams, uh, has always been extremely supportive of this event and what it does for our community as well. Uh, LG&E and Chris Whalen, River City Distributing, and Lining Cool Summer Shady Shandy uh, this year, Ross Kennedy, Yum Foundation, and Laura Malillo, Malara Melillo Barnum, uh, and KFC with uh, Lori Riddle Ebernez. Waterside uh, at uh, River Park Place, Steve Poe and Valentine Stoller, WUOL Classical 90.5, Daniel Gilliam, uh, Kristen, Kirsten Faltzgraf and Sarah Soltau, The Bell of Louisville, John Boyle, Beer Nose Pizza and Beer Nose by the Bridge with George Timmering helping. Friends of the Waterfront, Pam McCollum, uh, Kelly Luckett, Simon Signs, uh, Russ Simon, the Boys and Girls Club of Kentuckiana, Tina Hood and Kelly Luckett, Jug Band Jubilee, Heather Lianchini, the Kentucky Science Center, Melissa Blakenship, <coughs> Kentucky Museum of Art and Craft, and their executive, Aldi uh, Milliken and Ramona Lindsay, Nugent Sand Company with Tom Nugent, the Louisville Water Company, and um, I think that's it. <clears throat> but as you can see, a huge list of folks that have to, to come together in, in a positive way to make this event possible. We literally could not do it without each and every one of them um, being here and, and helping to, to do it. So now on for what you're really here to hear about is the event itself. And it's my pleasure to introduce my, my good friend and my colleague, Teddy Abrams, who will uh, talk to us a little bit about the event itself and what we can expect this year. Well, thank you, Andrew. And I just want to say what an what a incredible honor and a thrill it is to be here today after last year's performance right there, I think as everybody has attested to, it was really a special event for our community. And I want to just point out one of the reasons I came to this place, I came to Louisville, is because this is a community that genuinely believes in its culture, in its art, and I think it believes in the power of art and especially our orchestra to bring people together in a way that is very genuine and very important for the health of our community. And I cannot imagine another city of our vast size where a mayor would be able to quote from memory every single person that soloed with the Louisville Orchestra nearly a year ago. That's a big deal and it shows that from our corporate stance, our community stance, and our leadership stance, we have a really unified, I think, and very, uh, very well-connected desire to make sure that the arts and culture are not just alive, but are thriving and drive this, this community. So I just want to preface it with that. And as, as you said, yes, we, I think we did set the bar frighteningly high, so we needed to do something really wild this year. And I think uh, if you've been coming to the orchestra, you hopefully have become used to surprises and all sorts of partnerships that you would never expect from a symphony orchestra orchestra, but that's exactly what we're about. So we've put together a wonderful program that encompasses so many different genres and showcases so many extraordinary musicians that are here in Louisville. And one of the things that we've done as a headlining act is to partner with the band Houndmouth. They are going to be doing a, a leading act on the program with all new arrangements commissioned just for this occasion. And they're, of course, an extremely popular and very, very talented band from this region. We also have started, I think, what we'll ultimately become one of the really major musical events in the entire world. It's called the Sing for the City Contest, and this was the very first year of it. It was a contest that started on Instagram, then moved to YouTube, where people from around the world could apply 
And the winners, this is very much like American Idol, but way better because the prize is to play with the Louisville Orchestra here for 40, 50, who knows how many thousand people. And so we're very, very excited that this year we have two winners, uh, Carly Johnson and Justin Lewis, and they will be performing all new arrangements of their original works with the orchestra. We're going to keep growing this program until it, well, I think American Idol's over, so it will take its place. That's the plan. One of the big things that we've been working on at the orchestra is to engage all ages, and not just engage them by having all ages come to concerts, but actually participate in the music-making experience. And one of the things that I'm most proud of, and this is in partnership with Fifth Third Bank, is this program called the Landfill Orchestra. And we instituted that two years ago. It now just finished its second season. And that's a program where kids from throughout the community build instruments from trash and recyclables. They learn about acoustics. They learn about creativity in music-making. They learn about the ecology. And then they bring their instruments to the orchestra and get to perform with the Louisville Orchestra during our season. We're extending that to everybody. So we're going to have this really incredible uh, fifth, third well, landfill orchestra experience. We're going to have an entire fun center that we're, we're putting together where people of all ages can bring their trash and recyclables, whatever you want, and you can put together instruments and we will have a specific segment of the program where everybody can make music together because that is the kind of spirit that we want to engender uh, in our culture and our orchestra. And then, of course, one thing that you probably have noticed we, we've become really proud of is our ability to play music with fireworks. So if you saw Thunder, of course, you saw the, the kind of ultimate expression of that. And we're going to do it again, uh, unlike last year where the fireworks uh, were, were following the performance. This year, we're going to bring it all together. We are going to play live with fireworks, which is, of course, a, a giant thrill. And for all the people that have been asking when they can see something like Thunder again, July 3 is your date. So I just want to say an enormous thank you to the entire community and all the people that are standing here for making this performance possible. I want to see every single Louisville and well, as many as can fit on the Great Lawn out there on, on July 3 because we've planned a very, very special performance that celebrates the music of our city. So thank you very much for, for, for making this happen to everybody behind me. And I'll see you in a month. This, this event is a very important for another reason, and that is that it's an opportunity for the community to celebrate our heritage in a very safe way. And <clears throat> as everyone knows, fireworks are an important part of the event, but making sure that the fireworks are handled in a safe way uh, for the kids in our community. And one of the partners that we've had throughout all, for many years on this event that used to be the July 3rd and 4th event and now is the <clears throat> one day uh, festival with the Louisville Orchestra, the fire department has always been super supportive and Greg Frederick, who is the chief, has been here at virtually every one of these press conferences. And so I'm asking the chief he'd come forward and give some folks a safety tip or two. National Donut Day, we're going to have fun with that. <coughs> you know, we're fortunate in our community that we have the ability to provide a professional fireworks display for our, for our citizens and our community. As uh, Mr. Karam said, it is a very safe way to celebrate the holiday. Each year across our nation, during the July 4th holiday, there are hundreds of injuries, a number of deaths, and millions of dollars in property loss caused by the use of consumer fireworks. The latest available statistics from 2014 show 230 injuries nationwide, over half of which were to the hands and the face, and at least nine of those injuries proved to be fatal, all of those from the use of consumer fireworks. The injuries can occur without warning and not only affect the person that's setting them off, but cause injuries to children and innocent bystanders. So this year, we once again join Mayor Fisher to encourage everyone to leave fireworks to the professionals. Instead of dealing with the dangers and the messy cleanup of consumer fireworks, come to Waterfront Park to watch a beautiful display with your family and friends. And just a reminder, even though the state relaxed fireworks laws, our mayor signed into law a local ordinance that still prohibits the use of dangerous fireworks that explode, fly in the air, and emit flaming pellets. If you have a question on what's legal or not legal, you can contact your local fire department and have a safe 
Fourth of July holiday. Thank you. To conclude the uh, press conference, I'm going to ask Ashley Smith to come up and <clears throat> sh uh, give everyone a recap of the, of the entire weekend because there's more than just this. It's a couple of neat things going on. So, Ashley, if you would come up, and that will then conclude the press conference. And on behalf of the waterfront, we thank everybody for coming out, and uh, thanks for the great partnership with the city and with the Louisville Orchestra. Hi, thank you, and thanks to all of you once again for making all of this possible. So we have a really exciting weekend here at the Louisville Waterfront for the entire 4th of July weekend. Uh, we'll kick off on Saturday morning with the Florida Flea Ver Vintage Urban Market. That's from 10 to 5 on Saturday, July the 2nd. July the 3rd, of course, is our big Louisville Orchestra Waterfront 3rd, fueled by Thornton's. We'll open at 5 o'clock, and we have this great 5th, 3rd Family Fun Zone, so you really do want to be here at 5 because the activities are lovely. It's so fun for the whole family. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, the orchestra starts at 8.30 on Sunday night, and fireworks at around 10. And then on uh, Monday, July the 4th, um, oh, and I forgot to mention the Bats baseball team also has a game on Sunday, July the 3rd. So uh, uh, that will also be happening across the street here at Slugger Field. So again, vibrant waterfront neighborhood. The Belle of Louisville has a cruise both on Thursday, uh, excuse me, Sunday and Monday, a public cruise. And also on Monday, their Louisville City FC soccer tournament or soccer team has a game, a match on Monday night, and then fireworks will follow that um, soccer match, and the Belle of Louisville again has a cruise uh, for the public. So we hope that you come to all of these events. It's a great offering uh, downtown uh, in our community at our waterfront, so thanks very much. This has been a Metro TV production, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.